Chatterbox, a chat application built in TypeScript using IPFS and libp2p PubSub. I built this um, when I was on parental leave because <laughs> can't stop. Uh, anyway, uh, there are some, I had some goals with this, um, one of which was uh, learn TypeScript. Um, because I want to understand why people keep asking us for this feature for starters. Um, but also, I had this really good, uh, well, I, I think it's a good idea. I had an idea um, to, that we might be able to use TypeScript to generate our docs from. We could actually have better docs by having TypeScript type definitions in the repo. And at the same time as having better docs, also service this whole community of TypeScript people. Um, so I thought that might be a good idea. Uh, so that's why I wa like, wanted to do this. Um, second up, uh, I wanted to deploy JS IPFS in production. Uh, I, I sort of strongly feel that we should be like dog fooding our own stuff and using it. Um, I wanted to expose like errors or CPU problems or memory problems that might happen in a JS IPFS node that's running for a long time. Because all our tests, they spin up nodes, they last for seconds, and then they spin them down, we test that they work. All good, but they don't, what they don't test is that the node can spin up stay up for days or months or weeks on end um, and not, not explode. So um, I, wanted to, I wanted to feel that pain because I sort of feel that we should be feeling that pain. I think that people who do feel that pain don't always open an issue on our repos. They, they put things down and then they walk away. They're like, nah, that's not for me. <laughs> uh, so yeah. You know, and it can be like problems with like bugs, but it could be like developer experience or like user experience things. Like I couldn't use it properly, and I, I want to know. I want to feel that because I want to make it better, um, and I strongly feel that we should be doing that. Um, so, and the third thing was like I had this big idea that we should um, like. JS IPFS should be able to be its own preload nodes. Like we've got preload nodes, but they're Go IPFS nodes. Why are they Go IPFS nodes? Like I think that if we expect people to run JS IPFS in production, we should also be running JS IPFS in production. Like it doesn't make sense that we're not. Um, so the idea with the, like Chatterbox and this chat application that I was creating was that um, I'd actually store people's avatars in, in IPFS and then we'd have a preload node running for those avatars um, and that would be like a stepping stone to it being the actual preload nodes that are used in production. So um, they're my goals essentially, or they were my goals. Uh, cool, so many repos I made. Um, <laughs> There's a core of Chatterbox, which is just the, the which is just the bit where everything happens. Uh, <laughs> uh, you give it an IPFS instance, it subscribes to pub sub channels and stuff like that. Um, there is a web extension. Like I built this so that you could you could have like many different clients in many different places. Like I built a web extension version of it, but you could have it in Electron. You could have it in. Uh, you know, as a web page or whatever, doesn't matter. You just include the core and you should be able to use it. There's a relay. In PubSub terms, a relay is like just another node that is listening to the same topics as you are, uh, which is kind of fun. Um, and there's a bot. I built a robot for my own kind of testing and sanity because I, I wanted other friends on the network that, um, that I knew were actually <laughs> talking to me. Uh, so I built a robot who's running in the cloud somewhere just says random stuff every so often. <laughs> and then obviously there was some Ansible scripts that I had to write because I was deploying it to actual servers on uh, uh, DigitalOcean. I was going to say Dropbox, but <laughs> anyway. Uh, OK, so demo. Uh, this, this has all been running. Uh, like the whole time, web extension. You remember I said it's a web extension? This is it, so it's been running, and in, in here you can see like this column here is meant to be the list of, we don't have avatars yet, okay? Mm -hmm. So we've just got these randomly drawn ones. This is meant to be the list of all the peers on the network that you can, that you can currently see, and the, this little, I changed the, the diagram thing so it's a heart, because these are your friends. <laughs> um, so we've got, uh, we've got so we've got two, two of them here. We've got me, me on Chrome and me over here. Uh, and you can do stuff like you can, you can say things. Like I think, I think over here I've already added this. Yeah, I've added the Chrome one as a, as a friend already. And you can just sort of hit the, the um, friend thing and then they become or don't become friends. Um, you can add, add people by peer ID. So I've got my robot somewhere over here. Here he is. Uh, so I can just sort of 
copy that peer ID and I can add him as a friend by peer ID in case you don't just see him on the network, he's not already there. Um, so then, then robot's there. Ah, okay, the, I, I just need to send a message like, um, like because this Chrome one is my friend, um, so I could say, hi, look at this awesome docs site. Let's make it not beta. <laughs> cool, and then, I should see over here that I've got a message. I don't know, ah, there's meant to be like a notification, but actually, ah, this is automatically turned on my do not disturb. So I, normally I would get a message for that, a notification for that, but, but there they are. Uh, uh, let me just quickly do that one more time. There, and you get notifications. Anyway, that's it. <laughs>